Nigeria's annual inflation dropped sharply in June to 11.22%. Zimbabwe's annual inflation rate doubles in June to 176%. Plus, South Africa's ESCOM new funding bill to be presented on July 23. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Business Incorporated on Channels Television. I'm Chimezie Obi Iwawa. We start off the show with the markets and um, markets in Africa began the week trading in the negative territory at intraday. The all share index indices were down. Egypt's EGX30 took the heaviest hit, down 0.63%, while the JSE index in South Africa lost 0.16%. The NSC index was down 0.05%. A Kenya closed positive on Friday. And Dubai stocks rose on, uh, today on the back of real estate shares while other major golf bosses eased at intraday. The Dubai index rose 0.40%, lifted by its largest listed developer, Emma Properties, which gained 1.5%, and Emirates NBD was up 0.4%. In Abu Dhabi, where the index slid 0.28%, snapping nine straight days of gains, Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank dropped 0.9%, while the country's largest lender, First Abu Dhabi, was down 0.1%. In Saudi Arabia, the Tata main index slipped 0.15%, while Qatar shares fell 0.04%. And European stocks erased early gains in the morning amid worries that China's economy is slowing due to a trade war with the U.S. Well, let's learn more from Daniel Koop, who is at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Hello, Daniel. Good afternoon. Good to see you again. Yeah, good afternoon from sunny Frankfurt. Good to see and hear you again, Jimmy. Right. Now, China's economy grew 6.2% in the second quarter. That would be great for economies such as Germany or Italy. But for China, that's a disappointment, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's kind of a disappointment. I mean, we're used to other numbers uh, from the past. I mean, GDP growth in the past uh, in China was possible at a level of uh, sometimes 8, sometimes even 9 percent. Uh, now going down to uh, one of the lowest points we have seen uh, during the last uh, decades, I mean, we have to say. I mean, uh, but also, frankly speaking, when, we, when you talk to investors here on the trading floor, they don't really care if it's 6 percent or 6.5 or 6.5. 9 percent because they always have doubts how accurate these numbers uh, even are or if they are just uh, politically motivated. I mean, we just have to remember the quarter is uh, uh, just uh, a few days uh, pretty much over and uh, China is already presenting the numbers. When we talk about Germany or other European uh, countries here, they need lots of more time to report these numbers. Well, maybe the Chinese are just faster. We don't know it, but many investors here feel that all of this um, you know, is mostly uh, motivated, politically motivated. Uh, let me also tell you, and that's why we also saw the blue chip index DAX at the beginning at least uh, going up uh, to the green zone, uh, that uh, investors are keeping more an eye um, on other numbers uh, that we are also getting from the Chinese statistics office uh, there. Uh, on the one hand, for example, the industrial growth in China is still up by 6.3 percent. That's uh, very strong and promising. And also uh, the retailing sector, and that is even more interesting for investors up by 9.8 uh, percent. Yeah, let's see how all of this is going to continue. I mean, we have to remember that uh, China is only able to have these uh, record uh, growth numbers even at the moment, you know, a little bit down. But as you know, you said, I mean, 6 percent countries here in, uh, in Europe would be extremely uh, satisfied uh, with the growth of uh, 6 percent that uh, China is only able to uh, manage this with this enormous uh, debt that the uh, country has. Uh, created uh, during the last uh, decades. The question, of course, always is um, how long China will be able to live with uh, such a great uh, debt. Investors are feeling that uh, at one point this uh, will need to stop, and then they think that the realistic numbers, uh, how fast the Chinese uh, economy is growing, uh, will be only at a level of about 3 percent then. Now, how do you think uh, do you think all of this is related to the trade war with the U.S.? 
Well, certainly the trade war is the most dominating topic when we talk about the GDP growth there in China. And we do hear uh, that big companies in uh, China are more reluctant at the moment to do big investments because they simply don't know in which direction the trade war at the end is going to go. I mean, we have to remember that U.S. President Donald Trump and his Chinese counterpart, they were talking at the G20 summit there in uh, Osaka just a few weeks ago, and they agreed that they will continue to talk and that they will continue to negotiate. But after that, it has been a qu kind of quiet again. I mean, uh, we just don't know in which direction all of this is going to go. And I mean, in the um, past, uh, China has been uh, announcing a huge uh, tax cuts, for example, in order to speed up their economy, um, in order to get these uh, at least 6% uh, of GDP growth. And uh, we do feel that this trend most likely is going to continue. All right, the German Defense Secretary could be elected the successor of Jean-Claude Juncker tomorrow. But her election at this point is still not a done deal. What more do you know? Yeah, it's not a done deal at all because uh, there are uh, lots of people in the European Parliament who are at this point at least not sure or uh, sure that they are not going to uh, vote for Ursula von der Leyen. As you said, she's the current uh, defense secretary here in uh, Germany. She has been in uh, Brussels uh, during the last uh, days because, of course, uh, this new job would be uh, the highlight of her career. Um, she has been uh, positioning herself uh, already uh, in a number of topics. Um, just today she was talking, for example, about Brexit, that she is uh, willing um, to cooperate with the United Kingdom, of course, and uh, in case they might need a longer extension, that she would be also willing to negotiate that. So right now she is talking to all kind of, diff all kind of uh, parties in the European uh, Parliament, mostly the Social Democratic uh, party in the European Parliament is not uh, really sure if at the end they are going to vote her, but she will need the votes uh, from them in order to get elected, and she uh, will need at least 50% uh, uh, of the European Parliament to vote for her, and if that is going to be the case, we don't know. Tomorrow we'll know more. Sure, we'll get to know tomorrow. Well, the week has just started, and we have quite a lot to chew in the course of the week. Thank you, Daniel, and enjoy the rest of the day. Meanwhile,